Here is another incredibly poisonous plant, the othallum, also known as the pong pong tree. The pong pong tree is a type of plant native to multiple areas in South and Southeast Asia, as well as some Pacific Islands and a couple places in Australia. It is quite closely related to another incredibly toxic plant, the oleander, and has much of the same effects. All parts of the plant are toxic, and even burning the plant matter will cause irritants to be released in the smoke that are very not good to breathe in. But the most toxic part comes from the kind of pit of the fruit. The plant's main toxic component is a cardiac glycoside called Cerberin, named after the three-headed dog of Greek mythology Cerberus. It works by blocking the sodium potassium ATPase, an enzyme that is responsible for doing stuff inside your heart with sodium and potassium. The most common symptom is a slowed heart rate, among other heart things, but also include things like burning sensations in the mouth and other mucous membranes, as well as dizziness, vomiting, nausea. In severe cases, it also includes things like trouble breathing, irregular heartbeats, coma, and eventually death if not treated due to cardiac issues, usually cardiac arrest. Now, there is yet another name for the pong pong tree, which is the suicide plant or suicide tree. And that is because, historically, the fruits, especially the seeds inside the fruits, were used to do exactly that. And it was also used for murders because since this tree was so well known for people using it to commit suicide, if this was found to be the cause of death, it was not that much further looked into, so a lot of people used it to poison others to kind of fly under the radar. Additionally, the seeds and stones from the othallum plant were also used in what is called a trial by ordeal. Now, this practice has largely either fallen out of favor or become illegal because it is not a good way of determining innocent or guilty by any means, but a trial by ordeal would involve the accused party of taking a poison, usually from this tree or closely related trees, if the accused party survived, they were innocent, and if they died, well, then they were obviously guilty, problem solved. Now, this wasn't used very commonly. It wasn't used just, like, on a whim. It had to be a very serious crime to undergo a trial by ordeal. And again, it has fallen out of favor because by no means at all is this a good way of determining whether someone is guilty or innocent. Now, there has been a hypothesis where there is some kind of psychological factors where if you're innocent, you'll eat it faster and then puke it up and then be fine with less kind of time for toxins to absorb into the system. But if you were guilty, you would know you're guilty and you would be more like hesitant to eat it, eating small bits at a time, which would not trigger the stuff that makes you puke as much but that in turn would cause more time for the toxins to be released into your system. So if you eat it slower, you die, but I don't know, I don't know if that stands up to much scrutiny. It does get a little bit more complicated than that with a bunch of different trials by ordeal using different plants across different cultures, but overall this is not very commonly used anymore for good reason. But back to the plant, as of now, it is still occasionally used in the areas that it grows to commit suicides and homicides. And occasionally, I think there are accidental poisonings of people who do not know what this plant is and just like, oh, food and eat it, which is not a good thing. And while there's no specific antidote for poisoning by the othallum tree, there is supportive therapies that can be used, largely keeping the patient stable, keeping them hydrated, and making sure their heart doesn't shut off. However, this is quite a potent poison, with just one kind of stone from the inside being more than enough to be fatal to an adult human healthy person. And while it's not a super fast-acting poison, it usually takes a day or two for symptoms to develop and become fatal. It's not 
common enough for it to be tested for and to know right away what is happening if someone is poisoned by this, whether accidentally or intentionally.